Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Going bell to bell with the best in professional wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's get to all the exciting pro wrestling action and bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. God, that first hour was so amazing. We're going to do it again. I just took over the airwaves on K-Dawn and said, to hell with it. It's Hokamania time. Nah, I'm actually programmed in here. It's all good. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Mark Hoke. On the Mark Oak Show, the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. We are very happy to have you joining us here on KDON 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas, streaming on the Odyssey app. And, of course, we're also out there, YouTube, Facebook, and X at the Mark Oak Show. Just check us out and you know, get in this chat box. we got some good points lined up here, and uh, we're going to get to them in just a little bit. So you guys in the chat, be patient. promise we're getting to you because a lot of this was talking about stuff that happened at the end or – Later on, maybe, including no Shane McMahon yet, but we'll get into that a little bit. And I've got Stu Meyerick along for the ride from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Stu, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bears <laughs> up 35-10 midway through the fourth quarter. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. Trevor Lawrence, 22-32 for, I think he said 222. Doug Peterson getting fired. It's over. <laughs> I mean, gonna... hey, uh, you know, uh, Jets already fired their head coach. Why not? Yeah. Maybe Robert, Robert Sala could get down and help the Jags out with the defense a little bit. We'll do a little swap. That'd be fun. But, yeah. yeah. So, of course, big NFL day. Crazy college football yesterday. But we got to keep talking wrestling as we are, we're going through the Wrestle Dream card. We've got a couple matches to go. Of course, some big impact things happening up there at Tacoma. But the Young Bucks taking on Private Party. Of course, this was the big revenge match from five years ago when Private Party upset them in the AEW World Tag Team Tournament. And crowd was kind of blah on this for a while, and then they started getting into it as Private Party got closer and closer to winning the championships. Isaiah Cassidy puts on a great show, but the Young Bucks do survive. They remain the AEW Tag Team Champions. And apparently there was a lot of internal discussions on whether private party should win this match before it happened. And uh, some people were saying, Hey, you know what? Let's, let's put the belts on private party, but they did not pull the trigger last night. So Stu, let me ask you about that first. Is this the right decision? If I, I'll be honest, it felt like, so you had the, you had the in, intros and they played that video with amazing red trying to pump up, private party so it kind of led you to believe that private party may be winning the titles it was it was a really good match i i don't want to say it feels like the bucks have held the titles too long because of what i said earlier about i think it's going to be a matter of the elite lose all their titles at once but at the same time it it does feel like maybe they could have pulled the trigger last night. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of split on that one. I am too. And you know, one thing that really struck me last night, and, and once again, I love going through social media and checking out what reactions and people are giving. And you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh man, why didn't Private Party win?" You know, and clearly, there's something else coming. Maybe you know, maybe it's just they're going to tease it down the road because they had Isaiah Cassidy just collapsed in the ring crying that they lost and, you know, and and he really did a great job but on the Bucks side it one a couple of comments that I saw said typical Bucks match and you hate to you hate to hear that you you want to hear hey, everybody had a great match you know it was a lot of fun but I don't know. Is the Bucks act the way they're doing it right now? Is it getting stale? I would say yes. It's a. We have not seen. We've seen what two title defenses since the Bucks won the titles. Am I right? Yeah, I, th- I think it's two or three. Yeah, 
I mean, there. it ha- they have not they have not been on very often. They have not defended those titles very often. And again, and I go back to what we were talking about with the elite versus BCC. Look, I I get that that Matt and Nick are you know they 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 get very meta when it comes to their their roles, and I I think I heard at one time they were playing into the fact that the fans were tired of them being, you know, their usual selves. And that's why they decided to go into this direction. I don't think that was, I don't think that was the answer though. I'll be honest. It's not. And I, maybe it's just because I've gotten to know them. It doesn't feel legitimate. It doesn't. doesn't it, it, feel feels, real. it feels like they've lost their intensity. A little I, it's bit. Not even that. I don't think it's you even know? that. I think it's just simple fact that the what we see of what we see of the Jacksons right now is not it, it it's not it's it's they're playing a role, but they don't believe in it. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they've just kind of slowed themselves down. They're not they're obnoxious in a different way. It's more snotty. And I and I don't know if people are liking that. Uh, by the way, Bionic Scoop in the chat box said, boy, did they perfectly accept the win for private party. Uh, I hope full gear. So maybe we're going to get that rematch. It'll be interesting to see what the uh, the fan reaction uh, is going to be in the next couple of days. We'll see if private party gets another shot at this. So, yeah, it was kind of, yeah, kind of, kind of crazy. I don't know. It's just, there's just a weird feeling around the bucks to me. Well, and that's it's the same thing with Okada. Look, I get Okada probably wanted he wanted, I think, if you believe the reports, he wanted to be a heel after being the you know lead babyface for so long in New Japan. But the problem is every time they hit his music, the crowd cheers. Cheers. Yep. They want to cheer him. It's like there are some guys that are just natural baby faces. They're not go- and they're not going to get booed. They're, I I think all the way back to when the Road Warriors turned on Dusty, mm-hmm. it didn't work. The Road Warriors' and heels did not work, and they turned them right back. I think the same thing is happening with Okada, and I think to a small extent, same thing with the Bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. That's I mean, just me. Yeah, I'm I'm getting- opinion, but you know it's. You know, I've seen this before. Yeah, I'm going to be curious to see where the Bucks go from here because I, you know, I'm sure that they, you know, as, like I said, as the match went on, the crowd got into it. But at the beginning, it was kind of like, eh, you know. And so we'll we'll find out what happens with uh, Nick and Matt. By the way, did you feel like Nick st- is starting to look like Randy Savage? Did you notice that in his face? Well, he does the he does the mannerisms. You know, he does the mannerisms of Randy he's, Savage. He's getting the forehead crinkle a little bit, and yeah, he, I think he looks like a little he's, bit. And he's got know. the beard and the hair. I mean, he's starting to look like Randy Savage. If you go back and watch the match and do some pauses on it, I promise you, you'll see it. Yeah. Uh, next last match of the day: Mark Briscoe defends the Ring of Honor World Championship against Chris Jericho. A uh, pretty emotional match, of course. Jericho had. Uh, insulted Mark about his brother right before this thing happened, and Mark took offense to that, but and then uh, tried to beat him with the J driller, and that didn't go over well with Mark. And uh, Briscoe gets a a pretty big win for Chris Jer- over Chris Jericho here. Yeah, I th- and again, I you know I am firmly in the camp of do not have Ring of Honor title matches on AEW pay per views, but given this match, it was good. Mark doesn't have a bad match. No. He's he is such a professional. He's so good. Um I do you know, I am looking forward to see who he will defend. I would assume he's going to defend that title at Final Battle, which is a Ring of Honor pay per view or whatever you want to call it. Um I assume he will defend that title there. I don't know against two. Um it will be interesting. Well, and I say I don't know. A name just popped up because of what we will talk about with the main event. 
I I could see Claudio mm. going after that title again, and then now BCC have both world titles. Interesting. Yeah, that would that would be a hell of a match too, and a good Ring of Honor throwback. All right, so let's get to this main event. So Brian Danielson defending the AEW World Title against John Moxley. If Danielson loses, he is done as a full time wrestler. He's battling it out in his home area. A brutal match. And man, knowing what Brian's going through right now, because if you don't know, his neck is legitimately injured. He's got to have surgery on it. He's having nerve issues, getting tingling in one of his arms. I mean, he's in really bad shape right now. And he just took shot after shot after shot after shot to his neck and his upper spine. And I, it just, as aside from everything else that happened, I just have so much respect for him getting through that match. I mean, what an incredible performance by Brian Danielson. But eventually, Moxley gets through, wins the match. And before we get to the attack at the end, Stu, that silence that happened when Moxley won it, because he he won it on a submission, the crowd just went, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing because they were in shock. It remind, and I'm going to tell you that it reminded me of when the Undertaker streak was ended. Yeah. That came to mind when I saw that crowd reaction because they were just stunned that Brian lost that match. You, you did you were you surprised how quiet that crowd went? That was crazy. I was a little surprised. I it doesn't look the you know it was it was there in Tacoma. You're just down the road from Aber- from Aberdeen. It's Brian's home state. I think it's it's kind of funny. I'm I'm pretty sure that crowd really thought Brian would, you know, survive and and carry on. I think they may have been the only ones because I think everybody was, as soon as they booked Moxley, it was like okay, Moxley's winning because. Not not only because it's Moxley, but they also got to do still got to carry on this whole whatever. Um, so yeah, I was a little surprised. It was it it wasn't total surprise. It was it was fun to see a kind of a shock moment like that. Uh, and then everything that happened afterwards, and we're gonna get into it. I mean, uh, I've got my thoughts. Yeah, me too. So after the match is over, they had. Moxley kind of bowed down to Danielson, showing respect. And then the the BCC hits the ring. And they are absolutely brutalizing Brian Danielson. Wheeler Yuta and Darby Allen come out to try and make the save. But Wheeler then turns on Darby. They duct tape Darby's arm to the rope so he cannot help. So Darby's helpless in the ring watching this all go down. And Wheeler Yuta then pulls out, they pull out the plastic bag again, give it to Yuta, who then does the suffocation thing on Brian Danielson one more time. And I'll, I'll tell you what happened on my end when, where I was watching this. I went to Dave and Buster's, and a uh, nice plug for them. They were terrific last night, by the way. Uh, the one down in Henderson, by the way, I was one, wasn't the one in Summerlin, so just so you know. Terrific staff down there in Henderson. You mean you weren't one on the at the one off Mopac here in Austin? No. Okay. No. We are we are a Las Vegas show still, so yeah, I know. But <laughs> but I, my daughter was with me. She's fifteen, and I had told her about what happened the last time around when Brian took the bag, and she said, "After what everything you said to me, I can't and I can't believe you did that again. I can't believe they did that again." You know, why did they have to do that? And she was just watching the beat down and everything else. She's like, man, that was, I don't know. You know and that that's just somebody who's not a huge wrestling fan, but, you know, teenager. And said, man, that was a lot. And a lot of reaction has come out that said it was too much. But I'm going to slightly disagree. I don't think they need to do the suffocation thing again, but I understand it. I understand what happened last night because what they did was they made this group 
some of the biggest heels maybe in pro wrestling history at this point. You just tore Brian Danielson apart, and when you after you got done, you did it more, and you sent him out on a stretcher in his hometown and ended his career. Was it too much, Stu, or was it just right, or what do you think? So, look, uh, before I get into that, let's understand. Brian wanted to go out like this. Yes, this was did. Brian's idea, and, my, and probably a little bit of Mox. So I get that. I was really uncomfortable with the suffocation thing at All Out. Mm -hmm. I thought it was unnecessary. And I I go back to the old school thinking of, if you're going to do a move, there needs to be a purpose, even if it's post-match attack. You follow the suffocation thing this time, with pilmanizing Brian's neck. Yeah. So, again, I ask, if you were going to pilmanize his neck, why do the suffocation? I it, I get it. I, I, I get that Brian, this was the way Brian wanted to go out, and, you know, I'm glad he got what he wanted. I'm just, I'm just not comfortable with it. I mean, and that's me. Hey, there are those that loved it. There are those that hate it. That's you know, and that's fine. Yeah, it was. I'm giving you my view, and my view is, the suffocation thing was unnecessary, especially if you're going to follow up with the pillinizing of the neck. Yeah, and that, and I did forget to mention. I apologize. Yeah, that Claudio put a chair around Danielson's neck after that was over, and did the old concerto pillinizing spot, yeah. and you know. Off goes Danielson on a stretcher. It was, like I said, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't thrilled with the suffocation spot. You know, but to, but like I said, I think now you have established those guys as a brutal, brutal group that, you know, that one, the people are going to remember this one forever. And in terms of a story, now you've just, that group has told the locker room. Don't mess with us. Yeah, they'll stop it. Not don't I'm mess kidding. with us because we will do anything we want to you. And so, in storyline, I get it. It's but like I said, tough visual to deal with on that. I mean, yeah. you know, and I was starting to tr- think last night after I was driving home about you know what moments that kind of paralleled to me in pro wrestling history, and I. You know, I went back to the Ernie Ladd Ox Baker riot, mm-hmm. um, the the horseman's attack on Dusty Rhodes at the Omni that almost got them killed when they were trying to get back to the locker room. Um, you know, Hogan turning with the NWO. Now, I mean, those those that's kind of where I put this moment. And you know, you can say how what you think how it got there, but these guys did something that is that people are never going to forget. And then you add in the fact that this is Brian's last full-time match in all probability. I mean, man, it's a, it's a massive amount of drama there. So, yeah, it was. So, I mean, Tony Khan didn't even do the media scrum. He, you know, the storyline is he went to the hospital. So you had Tony Schiavone and Nigel McGinnis doing the meet the post show media scrum. Um, my the the other thing that they 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 mentioned it. So Bryce Rensburg, who I love to death, I think Bryce is one of the best referees out there. He's a fantastic guy. He's a wonderful friend. So Bryce is have. I mean, he is conflicted after the match. He is conflicted with handing the title to Moxley. Yeah, but he does eventually. As soon as he does, Pac's got this black gym bag, and he puts the belt in that black gym bag. What does that mean? Yeah. I mean, this isn't like Orange Cassidy carrying the backpack with the international title in it. This is something else, and I I would assume we will see what that means, hopefully, this week on Dynamite. But... That was that was an interesting twist that, you know, made me think, okay, I want to see what's happening. 
as far as the BCC itself, I think, and forgive me, I, I get it. We, you know, comparing AEW and WWE, that's fine. You know, people have problems with it. But I think Tony Khan is wanting to set up the BCC kind of like what we are seeing with Solo Sokoa and the bloodline, the new bloodline. Ruthless, no morals, you know, stop at nothing, that type of thing. Now we haven't seen we haven't seen Solo Sokoa trying to suffocate Roman Reigns yet. I say yet. I don't <laughs> think WWE will let, let that happen. Um but I and I get that and and that's that's fine. That's fine. They want to set up this monster heel faction because they don't have one right now. Not the elite, not House of Black. They the premier athletes, no, not even not even close. They want this monster heel faction that and I get it. Okay, if this was 20, 30 years ago, yes, they would get booed out of the building. Every building they come into. Nowadays, there are people that will cheer them because they're doing that. Which, yeah. Again, old school, I don't get, you know, but nevertheless. Yeah, and it, it was really interesting, too. The the crowd tried to start doing a, a thank you, Brian chant, and it went nowhere. Did you notice that last night? I did notice that, and that was because, because they kept they kept just brutalizing him. You know, that was the thing. There was there was no you didn't have Brian Danielson make the curtain call, you know, marking the end of his full time in ring career. And I and I I think that was on purpose. They wanted this to be such a a heavy, shocking moment. And Brian didn't Brian didn't want a curtain call. He want he wanted to go out on a stretcher, and again, kind of like what you said, this is something they're going to remember. And so now, every time they see Mox and Claudio and Pack and Marina Shavir, and now Wheeler Yuta, hopefully they get booed out of the building. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a very interesting moment, and I'm running a little long break, but I do want to get a couple comments in here real quick. Um, that were in the chat box. Jesse Hyde said, so AEW did not think or get their dream of seeing McMahon in AEW as in Shane McMahon, but there were rumors Sammy Callahan could be behind the new BCC, a.k.a. Capital Murder Combat Club. That's a pretty there interesting There is thought. talk that because they trademarked a, it was the name of the tag team that John Moxley and Sammy Callahan were, uh, I guess, on the indies. So there is speculation Sammy Callahan right now does not have a contract. I, you know, we last saw him in TNA. Could he be joining Mox in in AEW? Which would make that would make for very interesting viewing. I will give it that. I'm you know I'm a huge Sammy Callahan fan. Um, there's the speculation. Even if it's a short term contract, why not? You know, let's let's have a little more chaos. Yeah, I mean, there's there is somebody behind this. There's another layer to this whole thing, and we're gonna see where it ends up. But right now, I gotta get a break because if I don't, I'm just gonna lose my mind, and we're gonna have a really short segment. So let's do a little bit more here on the Mark Hoke Show, and don't forget, guys, follow us on X at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, the Mark Hoke Show, but subscribe to us on YouTube. That would bring so much joy to my heart. I promise you. Just go to the Mark Hoke Show and get in that chat box. We'd love to hear your thoughts on what happened last night. And uh, we're going to get into some other topics, too, with WWE and so on. So stick around, everybody. We'll be right back. 101.5 FM K-Dawn. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And let's get back to it. The best in pro wrestling news and entertainment on the Mark Oak Show here on K Dawn. My good pal Stu Myrick from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling joining me in the house here, having an awesome time breaking down Wrestle Dream. Now I got one more thing I want to hit on Wrestle Dream before we get into some other news. Who's next? 
who's actually going to go after Moxley? Because, and, and I saw a great tweet, by the way. Jeremy Lambert, our good friend from Fightful.com, said, you thought last week was upsetting. Wait until Darby dethrones Mox and Christian Cage cashes in his, cashes in his contract. And Matt Black from WrestleZone said, been dreading this for weeks, LOL. Now, we also had some other people come into the mix. MJF last night saying, I warned you about Dictator Mox. Adam Cole is now back, among many other people out there. Stu, I know they were talking Darby, but, man, there are a lot of possibilities on this one. There are a lot of possibilities. Uh, I say you keep MJF and Adam Cole away from the world title picture for a while. Um, man, the, the, the scenario with Darby winning and then Christian cashing in that could, that would be, oh my God, that would be nuclear. That's not going to happen for a while though. Yeah. Like it's, it mocks is going to hold on to this title for a while. Um, so it may be, I, I could see this lasting I can see this lasting until all in, until all in comes here, or uh, just north of here in Arlington. Um, I could see I could see him holding the title until all in at Globe Life Field, at least. At least I I agree with you because you're certainly not going to do all this build and all this drama and then have Mox drop the title in a month no. or anything like that, like full gear or World's End. I I couldn't see it. Which then it kind of. Brings up the question, okay, then what happens to Christian Cage's? I mean, is that is there an expiration date on that contract, or is it kind of like, is it kind of like the Royal Rumble or the uh, yeah the the Money in the Bank where it lasts a year, or is it just he's just got it in his pocket, you know? I there's there's a part. I mean, because I think they will eventually put the title on Christian Cage. But again, it's you're not going to have it happen anytime soon. So no, and 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 the one of the problems that has come up now for Christian Cage as well is this sickness issue with Luchasaurus getting pneumonia in his lungs, and he may not even be able to wrestle again. It's that serious. Mm-hmm. So now with Christian's group, you lose the muscle. So Christian would have to probably find somebody else to kind of fill in that role. Because you're not taking on those guys with Nick Wayne. I mean that that that's uh, not uh, happening. Wardlow? Now I think Wardlow did I hear right he's nursing an injury? Uh yeah, apparently like, he's he out with the, me now. We that like, got revealed would, a couple he, weeks ago. He seems like a, a good fit. Um I don't you know, I mean that's that's the first name that comes to my mind, but yeah, you gotta get him healthy first. Um but yeah, so I don't know. Ooh, Hobbs. Uh, I, 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 you know, I keep hearing Parahas Hobbs linking up with with M- MVP. I could see Hobbs doing it, but I think you know, I don't know. Um, uh, they, well, they may have to pull an audible with Luchasaurus out because maybe there was a possibility they were going to put the Christians, the patriarchy, up against those guys. So pretty. Uh, which and again, but that's heel versus heel. Which look, maybe some people love that. I don't. I think it's kind of like okay, yeah. I just want to see both of them beat the snot out of each other. You know why? If you put a heel versus heel, why? Why should I care? Yeah. Um. By the way, uh, buying a scoop in the chat box. Phenomenal photographer. If you haven't checked him out, you know, get in, catch him on uh, on X, and he will do your event. He's amazing. Says feel for Luchasaurus. I had double pneumonia and it, and it literally killed me. I'd rather see him healthy and happy, and I agree with that. I will throw one other name out, and this was I've seen this discussed, and Jesse Hyde had in the chat box. Kenny Omega tease something for a joint show in Tokyo Dome. If Kenny's healthy, is Kenny the savior of AEW? I don't know. That would be. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, but. I want Kenny get healthy first. And right. it looks like there is, we've seen the training pictures, him and Kota Ibushi. 
you know, that's that's fine. Um, Kenny Omega at Wrestle Dynasty in January. That could be interesting. Uh, if if for another reason you're doing it in Japan where Kenny Omega just ruled. Um, Kenny's an EVP. But I think, but I think it's. I think when Kenny comes back, we're going to see him and Kota, the the gold the Golden Lovers together again, uh, and then maybe down the road, maybe Kenny as a singles wrestler. Yeah. So. I, and and hopefully Kenny's doing well. And you know, I know Matt, our good friend Matt Black from WrestleZone, announced he has diverticulitis too. So he's trying to get through that, and we want to wish Matty all the best. But hopefully Kenny will be back safe and healthy. And you know, same thing for Luke Soros, man. Because everybody, you know, wrestlers are so used to pushing through that pain. But man, you got to take care of yourself first because there's, there's there's no life, there's no career if you don't. So. A lot of speculation, man. More questions than answers coming out of this wrestle dream. We'll see what happens in AEW. I want to get into some rock rumors that hit. There was a rumor going around. Dave Meltzer apparently reported this, that the rock is going to be unavailable for WrestleMania. And the rock just responded saying, don't believe everything you hear in a night and not in not such a nice way. But Stu, I want to throw this out to you because the, the situation with with Dwayne Johnson is very volatile when you think about it. You no, know, he's he's an actor first. If he gets a if he gets offered a role, then somebody's going to pay him you know twenty million dollars to do a movie or something like that. I don't think he's going to turn it down for for WrestleMania forty one. Maybe, maybe he would, but the problem with with having Dwayne so involved in this still is that. You never know when that call's going to come, that something's going to come up and he's going to get pulled out. And, you know, it interrupted some stuff going on with the bloodline. And God forbid something else comes up here, too. Now, if Dwayne is saying, you know, look, I'm I'm in, don't don't buy it. You know, that's another thing. But, you know, it's it, it just bothers me a little bit that you're if you're putting your, you know, putting the chips in the basket for your for Dwayne Johnson. You are taking that risk. You are, but you would think, okay, first of all, Dwayne's Dwayne controls his schedule. Nobody, it's not, you know, it's not movies. It's not WWE. Dwayne controls his schedule. So if he is, if he has, you know, if there are plans to have him at WrestleMania 41, whether it's against Roman, whether it's Roman Cody, whatever, that day, that day is probably firmed. And I, I get he is incredibly successful in Hollywood. It would have to be a monumental role. We're talking Oscar worthy for him to to not be available. So I get that. So why? I, Dave, so where did this report come from for Dave? I'm curious. I don't know. And and look, and this and the, this kind of speaks to. Guys like Dave Meltzer, Sean Ross Sapp, um, there are those in, in look internet the 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 X community, Twitter community, whatever. It's a wonderful tool, but it can be so toxic. Mm-hmm. And there are people that just it, it's it's hilarious how how much hate they get. Oh, I, no. I I compare it to everybody that hates the commentary teams on the NFL. It's like people, why are you wasting your energy with this? Is 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 your life so is your life so boring that this is the only thing that gives you some reason to wake up? <laughs> or what? Look, these guys are putting out stuff. It's their opinion. If you don't like it, don't read it. If you don't like something on TV, you turn the channel. Yeah. Simple as that. Where did Dave get this, you know, thing that Rock may not be available? I don't know. I mean, you know, he's got his sources. Uh, but again, as I said, Dwayne controls his schedule. If he's if he says he's going to be at WrestleMania 41, he's probably going to be at WrestleMania 41. 
Yeah. So we'll see what happens with The Rock. But, you know, it's funny you brought that media thing up, too, because I saw some people online trashing everybody up at Wrestle Dream, and I was up there last year. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get there this year. was in the scrum. But, you know, everybody's doing their best in there, and not everybody's got a journalism degree or has studied journalism. At least I did. So, you know, I've got a pretty good idea of how to handle things, even though interviewing wrestlers can be very difficult. It, especially in those scrums, because you don't have a lot of time to prepare. You don't know who they're bringing out, and you don't know if they're going to be in character or if they're going to be their regular selves. So, you know, before people get out there and start trashing everybody that's doing the scrums, man, realize that it's not easy. But at the same time, if you're in the scrum, yeah, you got to be ready to have a few questions ready to fire. But yeah, Look, that was that was tough. It was it was it was hard seeing some of the comments I heard last night. It is it, doing wrestling press conferences totally different. I have done I have done numerous press conferences in sports, Super Bowl press conferences, Dallas Cowboys, F one, you name it. It is a totally different animal. And you're right. There are those in the wrestling media who are not trained or do are not are not versed in journalism. You went through journalism. I learned on the job. I learned from some of the best in the business. There are those that cover wrestling that are simply wrestling fans that know how to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So, yeah. And, and also understand these wrestling press conferences. You're not going to, you're, you're not going to get some sort of groundbreaking breaking news type, you know, big story. Look, these are part, it's part of the show. Yes, it's after the show, but it's still part of yeah, the show. We're un, we're involuntarily, well, voluntarily, I should say, yeah. but we're uh, unwittingly a part of the show. We really exactly. are. Exactly. So take, you know, take them with a grain of salt. Yeah, please. Right. Come on. Take it easy, guys. I won't say some of the people I it's saw doing that. But... It's pro wrestling. Yeah. Have fun with it. Absolutely. All right, so we have to get our one more break in here to wrap this up, but uh, I want to remind everybody, if you're going to be doing some traveling, you know, like if you're coming to WrestleMania, as an example, you might want to book your hotel rooms through thetravelshark.com and uh, go to tra thetravelshark.com backslash Mark Hoke. It's powered by Priceline, and you know all those hidden, fee hidden uh, hotels that you have sitting around when you go to some of these sites and you don't know where you're booking. Well, you can get that employee pricing at the travel shark.com. It's an amazing site. I'm telling you, and it covers the world. It, you've got everything that you need. So you're going to save a ton of money on all your travel costs. So if you're a wrestler, for example, and you're going all over the place, you need to have a, you know, save a little bit of that money, man. So just go to the travel shark.com backslash hoax show. So that way I get my hokey points and everybody's happy. So once again, it's the travel shark.com backslash hoax show. Let's take that final break. And when we come back, I forgot about something last week. Shame on me. And Shame the, on you. And the person that I forgot about could absolutely rip my head off. So I'm going to make sure that I get that in when we return. Stick around. We'll be back with more on the Mark Hoke Show on KDOM 101.5 FM. The Talk of Las Vegas. We'll be right back. Looking for high-quality custom screen printing in Las Vegas? Look no further than Off-Grid Creations. Need a few custom t-shirts for a local event, band merchandise, or family reunion? We've got you covered. Large order of uniforms for your staff, sports team, or club? We can handle that, too. Our experienced team will work closely with you throughout the entire process from design consultation to final product. Call us at 661-300-1115. That's 661-300-1115. Or visit our website at off-gridcreations.com. Get a free consultation today. Come for the treats, stay for the winning. With more free play giveaways and more bingo jackpots this October at Jerry's Nugget Casino. Join Hot Seats every Sunday, Monday, and Friday for instant free play. Every session, check out the second chance bingo jackpots. Winner, winner, stay for dinner. Delight in Jerry's 1689 steak and shrimp meal. Savory steak, succulent shrimp, plus all the sides. Served every day 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. This October, get more treats at Jerry's Nugget Casino. Jerry's Nugget Casino. Your kind of 1015 FM K Don. 
You're listening to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Vegas, The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Now, here again is Mark Hoke. That's right. I'm willing to roll the dice one more time here on The Mark Hoke Show on Kate on 101.5 FM, the talk of Las Vegas. Fortunately, Stu Myrick is by my side from Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Follow him at Stu Myrick, S T E W. M Y R C K and check out everything he's got going on as well. Because if you don't, you know, you, I mean, it'll, it'll help your life. I think. Would you agree, Stu? Yes, it would help your life. <laughs> yeah. So take a look at sports guys talking wrestling. Uh, now I got to get this thing in before I talk about anything else because I don't want Hammerstone to kill me. I can't have Hammerstone kill me. I teased this last week and totally blanked it. I want to congratulate Hammerstone because he took a double first place in the super heavyweight division at the annual double J or WJ classic and Arizona state uh, bodybuilding championships about a week and a half ago. And uh, they said that he would have been second overall if they would have had something like that and tell you, he would look unbelievable. That guy is just putting so much time in the, in the gym and uh, congratulations to TNA's Hammerstone on a successful competition. Stu. Way to go, Way to go Hammerstone. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, jeez. Yeah. Dude shredded. <laughs> I I would love to hear what yes. his diet is. I mean, I've already talked about the workout, but I never asked him about the diet. Must be something just nuts. But congratulations to Hammerstone. Uh, Alexa Bliss is coming back, Stu. She's spilled the when? beans on that. She hasn't announced when, but she said she's definitely coming back soon. So the the rumor has it will be after the start in the start of 2025. But that Wyatt six tease is, is been out there. You excited to get Alexa bliss into that group. I've always been torn. Um, because yeah, I get, you know, she enjoys that stuff, but at the same time, I really enjoyed her, her singles work. So, um, let's see how she fits in. Yeah, it, I, I'm torn on it too, because I love little miss bliss, you know, being the snotty little girl, she was a, a lot of fun and she's a great wrestler. I, you've already got Nikki cross in there. You know, I don't know if you really need her or not. You know what I mean? It's just, eh. unless you have her and Nikki go after the tag titles. Yeah, you could do that. That would, that would be a fun, oh, oh, Wait, those two back together Yeah, in kind of I a mean, weird way. Which, by the way, when do we see a member of the Wyatt Six go after gold? That is an interesting question. You know, what is their purpose? And I know Phil Stamper and I were talking about that. That what do you, you know, where where does this story go with those guys? Do you, you know, are they going to try and take over championships eventually? Are they just going to torture people all day long? You know, where where does this all end up? With the Wyatt Six, because you know, you know you're not going to be able to do this forever. So what's what's the end game with these guys? That's a good question, and it, you know, and it's you know, yeah, I know. I just said when do they go after championship gold? Because I really do believe this faction doesn't need gold. They don't need championships. The faction is an attraction in and of itself. So. Do you have them just, you know, every every now and again, if you got a heel that needs uh, to be taken down a notch or two, do you bring them up? I don't know. And that's the thing. We have not seen them in a couple of weeks outside of the QR codes and the teases. We haven't seen them around in a little bit. So yeah, they've apparently got a new target, but who it is. And I don't. I still have. Or, or, or and, and like you said, they're teasing a new member, which I think most everybody would assume it's going to be Alexa Bliss. Yeah. So intriguing stuff going on there with WWE. And uh, lastly, uh, Kurt Angle said in a interview that he felt like when he came back to WWE that the reason all this went down and he ended up having to wrestle Byron Corbin was they were teaching him a lesson. Because when he left, it wasn't quite the way he was supposed to do it. He said he was going to stay for six months, and then he left right away when his contract uh, ran out and kind of bailed on him. 
and went straight to TNA. Do you do you think WWE was punishing Kurt Angle? Sure. It's Vince. <laughs> it's Vince. So why not? Yeah. I mean, he, he was known to do stupid stuff like that. You know, it was probably he probably rationalized it in his mind. And so yeah, they you know, they did not have a real direction for him. So you have him lose to Baron Corbin at Mania and you know, that'll teach you or yeah, whatever. Did, wasn't the didn't he make that comment about he didn't care what people thought? And I think he was referring to that match. I'm trying to remember. I'm gonna have to look that up. But I, but yeah, so yeah, I think Kurt Angle. He may not have cared. It just didn't make sense. No, it was it was ridiculous. It was but again, ridiculous. Nancy booking, none of it made sense. Yeah, there you go. Well, Stu, hey, I want to thank you for sitting in with me today. I certainly do appreciate it. I'm sure we'll see you again more and more on Thursday nights and Sunday. And uh, of course, you can follow him at Stu Meyer, S T E W M Y R C K, at Sports Guys Talk and Wrestling. And you can follow our show at Mark Hoke Show on X. Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show. YouTube, subscribe there at The Mark Hoke Show. MarkHokeShow.com is the website. And MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com for the podcast as well. We're going to get all sorts of stuff up, including the battles that NJ Holiday, Stu, and I had for the Pro Wrestling Time Machine Tournament last Thursday. And don't forget, we got our Thursday night show coming up around 8.15 p.m. It's The Mark Hoke Show late night on the internet, YouTube, X, and, and Facebook. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show and download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join the Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.